Let's do a recap of that supposed red wave or even red tsunami everyone was predicting, shall we? And let me warn you, we do not have final results. So this is a bit like 2020. Some states are going to take days more to finish counting their ballots because the process to count ballots varies state by state. For example, Oregon and California vote by mail. And as long as a ballot was postmarked by election day, those ballots are going to be counted as long as they arrive at the elections office by a specific date. So let's remember that this is more like election week, weeks. And I will tell you right now, a major race is going to run off on December 6th. That's right. The Georgia Senate race between Democrat Raphael Warnock and Republican Herschel Walker is going to give you 2020 runoff vibes because no candidate passed the 50% mark. So yes, there's going to be a runoff. And since I'm already talking about the Senate, let me give you some highlights. Number one, Democrats held on to the seat from Democratic Senator Maggie Hassan of New Hampshire. She was facing Republican Don Baldock, one of those candidates that were endorsed by the NRA and who also said that the 2020 election had been stolen. Number two, Democrats couldn't win the open seats in Ohio or North Carolina, and they lost both to Trump endorsed candidates. In Ohio, J.D. Vance is the senator elect. In North Carolina, it is Ted Budd. Number three, Democrats picked up a seat in Pennsylvania because Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman defeated another Trump endorsed candidate, Mehmet Oz. And there are more news about Pennsylvania that I'm going to share in a minute. But about the Senate, number four, Arizona and Nevada have not been called yet, but things look promising right now. In Arizona, Democrat Mark Kelly is ahead and the percentage of votes that haven't been counted should help him. In Nevada, the GOP challenger Adam Laxalt is leading but there are thousands of mail-in ballots left to count, and it looks like Senator Catherine Cortez Masto could win re-election. Now let's jump over to governor races and trifectas. First, the heartbreaking news, Brian Kemp won re-election in Georgia, defeating Democrat Stacey Abrams. In Texas, Greg Abbott won re-election, defeating Beto O'Rourke. However, it's important to note that Democrats were very strong along the southern border. Florida was another win for the Republicans, but that shouldn't be much of a surprise to anyone. Pero, 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 the polls were wrong again. Surprised? Democrats lost all statewide races in Florida by even bigger margins than what the polls indicated. They lost the Latino vote and the Miami-Dade County. So yeah, Dems have a Florida problem, but Republicans have a Trump problem. Now, New York was scaring us a lot because incumbent Kathy Hochul was trying to hold on to her seat against Republican challenger, but she won. Now let's get to more exciting governor news. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer won re-election against Tudor Dixon. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers won re-election as well. And in Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro defeated one of the most dangerous candidates, Doug Mastriano, the guy that was at the Capitol on January 6th. He's also a white supremacist, etc., etc., etc. But let me tell you more about Michigan. Michigan Democrats also won control of both the state house and the state Senate. This is the first time in 40 years that the Democrats have complete control of the state legislature. So Michigan is now a blue trifecta. Democrats have the governor's office and both legislative chambers, but they are not the only ones. Minnesota, Maryland, and Massachusetts are also blue trifectas. Democrats picked up two governor seats. Massachusetts elected Mara Haley, 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 the first out lesbian to be elected governor. And I'm also waiting for the AP or the New York Times to call the governor's race in Oregon for Tina Kotek, who is another Democrat who's also openly lesbian. In Maryland, Democrat Wes Moore will be the next governor, defeating another Trump endorsed candidate. Moore is also making history as the first black person elected governor in Maryland history. Democrats had a trifecta in Maine and they kept it. So there has to be something of the M's, right? Because Democrats kept their trifecta in Maine and now they have trifectas in Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, and Minnesota. Hmm. Anyway, let's talk about the house. This is going to take a while, but everything seems to indicate that Republicans will get control. However, not by the huge margins that people were anticipating. It could end up being something like 215 to the Democrats and 220 for the Republicans. Majority is 218. So keep that in mind. Also, 
I have to mention this. Usually, the party in power loses in the midterms. Trump lost 40 House seats in 2018, his first midterm. Obama lost 63. Clinton lost 52. Reagan lost 26. Carter lost 15. So Biden going from 222 to something around 215 is a very clear sign that, again, the red wave or red tsunami was a fabrication amplified by the GOP and the media just fell into the trap. Now, one more thing. Voters in California, Michigan, and Vermont ratified constitutional amendments protecting abortion rights. In Kentucky, people voted on a constitutional amendment to declare that their state constitution does not protect abortion rights, and they rejected it. This doesn't mean that abortion is legal in Kentucky, though. There's an ongoing case before the Kentucky Supreme Court that will ultimately decide that. Now, a lot of people worked on making these midterms what they are, but we have to recognize one specific group right now, young voters. 2022 was the second highest youth voter turnout in the US in the last three decades. 63% of young voters voted for Democrats and only 35% voted for Republicans. The strongest support came from young people of color. Wow. 89% of black youth and 67% of Latino youth voted for a Democratic candidate. To them, this is not just about Trump. It's about the climate crisis, the mess we're leaving them, protecting our reproductive freedoms that they see being taken away from them, and ending gun violence. So maybe pollsters should figure out a way to talk to Gen Z to learn how they're feeling about these different races. I don't know, I'm just saying. My friends, this is my super quick wrap up of some of the things we know from this year's midterm election. There's a ton more, so I'm gonna give you some links right below if you wanna keep reading. We have a lot of work to do in Georgia, so follow me on Instagram at tono.latino to learn more about everything we can do to help get a bigger majority in the Senate. I'll see you again next week.